what's more mysterious? Someone moderately known starting a movie and then that movie just disappearing? Or a movie coming out from a completely unknown director and then that director just disappearing? And then when information on that director comes out, that information also disappears. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew, Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad, Matthew gonna drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones there are to be had. Today's episode... Heavy Metal Massacre. <sighs> Hello, Internet. I'm called Bobby Young. Or am I? And today's film has a truly baffling backstory, to the point I'm not sure I got everything correct. So please take this with a grain of salt. Heavy Metal Massacre was created by Bobby Young to promote his glam metal band. And we'll get into the ways the movie does this, but if you need proof that that's what this was for, here's a print ad claiming exactly that. But in the years after its release, the VHS became incredibly rare and Bobby Young disappeared from entertainment altogether. So, what's up with this movie and what happened to Bobby Young? Enter a little website called Bleeding Skull, who serve as a bit of an archive for shot-on-video horror, providing reviews and information on them, and occasionally even re-releasing rare or lost shot-on-video movies. And one of those films was Heavy Metal Massacre, complete with a nice essay titled The Search for Bobby Young. Unfortunately, this video is out of print, and while the movie is on YouTube, the essay isn't backed up anywhere. The only piece of information I've managed to gather from it is Bobby Young later came back to entertainment in the late 90s under his real name, David DeFalco, somewhat infamous director of Chaos. But not infamous enough that you're likely to have heard of him. Of course, he didn't direct Heavy Metal Massacre. Despite writing, producing, and being one of a handful of credited actors, directing was handed off to DeFalco's cousin, Stephen DeFalco, who is still credited as Bobby Young. Steven would not re-emerge in the film industry under a different name, and this is his only film. So, high expectations for this one. This is Heavy Metal Massacre. So the film opens on a bizarre slideshow of Bobby Young's headshots. The opening is, of course, set to heavy metal. And it sounds good for, like, a second, but then the riff gets super repetitive. <laughs> And we get sweeping shots of buildings and posters and art. It seems like where you'd put the opening credits, but instead this three minute solo leads to nothing and the credits play over footage of Bobby just standing in front of a wall. And then there's a couple people walking in and out of a building and it's seven and a half minutes until anything fucking happens. You could start the movie put on my last video, and it'd be over before the film actually starts. We eventually open on some cops deliberating a series of recent brutal murders with no leads. And then, cocaine. So, quick probably unnecessary sidebar. Uh, I said this was to promote Bobby Young's glam metal album, and previously I've discussed hair metal without really elaborating on what that is. Uh... Glam metal and hair metal are the same thing. In fact, hair metal started as a bit of a pejorative term for glam metal, but now everyone calls them both hair metal. So, to put it succinctly, uh, hair metal is cocaine music. It's the shit you listen to when you're high out of your mind. It's the 80s, you're doing a bunch of coke, and you're voting for Ronald Reagan. It's... Fast, loud, high-pitched, vapid, and it comes crashing down on you the second they play power ballads. Fuck power ballads. The girl's friend is trying to get her off the stuff, and I guess that was enough of that scene. Things just blow right past you in this movie. <laughs> blow. 
No pun intended. Hope that remains true for this scene because I can't hear a word they're saying. Cops show up and rough this guy up trying to get information out of him about a dead girl. He's uncooperative, so they take him downtown. Cut back to the room with the posters. We get this trippy shot and, well, Bobby has a girl over and they just sort of meander around his apartment while this three and a half minute song finishes playing. Okay, time to talk about shot on video films. So in the 80s, there were suddenly consumer products that could make films. You didn't need fancy cameras or expensive film, you just needed videotape. And a lot of filmmakers took advantage. It was a bit of a blessing and a curse. Like we saw last time with death metal zombies, some filmmakers with no budget were able to make passion projects out of it. But on the other hand, the vast majority of shot on video films were made to turn a quick buck. These are pothead video store fodder. And I don't mean they're stoner movies necessarily, I mean they're ideal for watching while high. You've got a couple really weird, amazing scenes strung out by a whole lot of nothing to pad the film to feature length. So, they're films weird enough to make you go, Yo, what the fuck? But they're also films where nothing happens, so you don't actually have to pay attention. You can zone out, talk, pack another bowl, or contemplate while you can't feel your legs. The perfect marijuana movies. Of course, Heavy Metal Massacre is a tad different because it's padded out to give time for Bobby and his band to play their songs. And their music takes up a lot of this movie. Not even in relevant ways, like... They could easily have written a Spinal Tap-esque film where they're an actual band playing actual songs. Or even a musical-type film like the Beatles would make, weaving their music into the story. Or, you know, anything but a disjointed slasher that just stops dead for metal music to play. And if it seems like I'm going on too many sidebars to fill this video up with pointless information, it's because nothing fucking happens in this movie. No, that's not for right now. Because we don't have money for a nudity clause. He ties her up, convincing her it's a kinky thing, and then just... hits her in the stomach with a rubber mallet, and gives her a little boop on the head. I think they're trying to play this as slow motion, but it's obviously not. And then we see blood dripping, not out of her head or anything, just onto the floor from off screen. She was not bleeding in the previous shot. We see those cops interrogating that guy in what is obviously a police station, and not just some empty room in the abandoned building this film was shot in. So you figured you'd teach her a lesson and snuff her. Okay, you got a point. It is a better police station than snuff. But this place is so cramped they can't even get a cutaway shot. We gotta let this shithead go. But you gonna let this scum back out on the fucking street? I don't like it any more than you, but we got no choice. Establishing shots of a bar and... Establishing shots of a bar... Just... Just gonna keep showing that bar... I love your hair! Did you do yourself? Jeez, finally! So, Bobby and this girl are flirting and- up. Oh, nope, more bar shots. Okay, some guys challenging to a fight and- Are you fucking kidding me?! Look, I don't think a shitty horror film is a good way to promote your band in the first place, but... Surely you recognize people are gonna get tired of these pointless musical interludes and just turn it off, right? Alright, I'm not gonna mention any more musical numbers unless they're really egregious, promise. Bobby takes the lady back to his apartment for a drink. I think he drugs her, although it's kinda hard to tell. And all he does while she's out is take her pants off. Not her panties, not to rape her, not even to murder her. Isn't murder, like, his whole thing? I thought that's why he was drugging her. Like a setup to a murder? Tie her up or something? Nah, just gonna take her pants off. So yeah, he ties the woman up and kills her. Again. This time I think he's pulling her tongue out, but there's no prop tongue, so it just looks like he's pulling blood out. Herschel Gordon Lewis looks down on you in shame. Then he beats a guy in an alley with a hammer. Lame. What else you got? <laughs> Mother. Fucking. 
Chainsaw. And that's the best death of the movie. Hope you liked it. We finally cut back to those girls who were doing cocaine. That only took 40 minutes. Oh, well, enough of that, I guess. Moving on. Luckily, it's just another pointless musical interlude, and cut to them at the bar where Bobby tries tempting the one girl with cocaine. And you're ready for a crazy twist? He ties her up and kills her. Glad this victim got a backstory, unlike the other three victims. Really made all the difference. I really cared so much more about this character. And Bobby hands her necklace off to another guy who may or may not be the guy the police roughed up earlier. He shows up to the girl's apartment, and the one who's still alive has to stall him while she waits for the cops to show up. Why don't you stay for a while? You know, we're here all alone, just you and me. Well, I didn't think you felt that way about me. I mean, you never... I know, but I've been thinking about you lately. Really? You know I've always liked you. I've always liked you, too. Mmm, bad acting I can laugh at. Warms my soul. He catches on to her, though, and runs out. In front of a car. And this happens. What's the 80s version of Windows Movie Maker? Because I'm pretty sure that's what this was edited on. So an ambulance shows up, and fun fact, the single other thing I've been able to parse from the search for Bobby Young is that they called an actual ambulance and pretended to be injured to get this footage. And that fact is more interesting than anything in the movie. So based on the evidence, and since he's no longer alive to prove one way or the other, the police assume that guy was the killer. And after one final musical interlude, we see Bobby leave the bar with a woman, and the film graciously ends. It is abrupt, but not unwelcome. And that's Heavy Metal Massacre. Bro, I am so lenient on these metal ween picks, and even I can't get behind this. Oh my god, this movie is a slog. So many pointless musical scenes. It'd be easier to just cut the plot out and make it a music video compilation. And to be fair, the music is... alright. I mean, they're no Motley crew, but it's perfectly acceptable hair metal. But even where other shot-on-video movies can be a slog, but at least have some fun, weird shit in there, this is boring even when there is a plot. I do not recommend this film. There are so many way more fun metal movies. This one is just disappointing. Man, I'm gonna need something really wild to finish off Metal Ween. Mm. Oh, hold on, let me answer this Facebook message. Huh. Yeah, that'll do. Why don't you stay for a while? You know, we're here all alone, just you and me. Well, I didn't think you felt that way about me. I mean, you never... I know. But I've been thinking about you lately. Really? You know, I've always liked you. I've always liked you, too. <clears throat> oh, God. He drugged me and took my pants. Yeah, they had a little stain on them, so I, I went ahead and washed that out for you. Oh. Uh. Thanks, I guess. Yeah. Now I'm gonna murder you. Wait, what? 